I said I want to study journalism. I couldn't believe the kind of uh, <clears throat> opposition I was met with. With most people of the previous generation, they're so afraid if you do something that's they've not done. A decade ago, uh, for an actress, for example, there were so many boxes, like you hit a certain age and it was already decided that what you were going to do and what you were not going to do. Unfortunately, we haven't had fair representation of female stories on screen in India at least. I mean, if you just like look at India per se, whether across all geographies, it's greatly important that we have stats like over Munir coming up. Somehow we are stuck, stuck in the male-female divide. We're not even talking about ageism, racism, racism, casteism. When these statistics are thrown on your face, it's a constant unbiased way, in a way unbiased way of looking at our truth. Hi Parvati, hi Nitya, hi Padma Priya, welcome to The Quint. Thank you so much. So we have seen movies and shows which document journeys of like motherhood or pregnancy but never puts the spotlight on pregnancy or you know debunks myths around the process. So do you think the narrative is changing nowadays? I don't think there are enough content um, in this context for the narrative to change yet. I guess this is going to be the beginning of it, but Anjali is definitely taken it head on. And again, I'll have to quote her here because she is the maker. From what she says in all her interviews, it's about it's about female friendships, or not even just female friendships. About it's about friendship and sisterhood through the context of pregnancy. So that is probably how it needs to be like looked at before we sort of you know take it in. Whenever a woman takes a decision it's always she's always met with unsolicited advice so could you like you know speak about instances in your lives where you like you know you have received totally uncalled for advice i remember when i wanted to study and i said i want to study journalism i couldn't believe the kind of uh, <clears throat> opposition i was met with you know family coming and trying to counsel me as if I had done something like I was going to do something very wrong. Uh, they couldn't understand, you know, why don't you do medicine? It takes a lot of energy to fight against it. It did for me at least. I, like, uh, I was going insane at that time. Going back now thinking about it seems so silly. But uh, yes, we do come from places where you know, they seem to be so afraid of change. I think that's what it is with most people of the previous generation. They're so afraid if you do something that's they've not done. Yeah, so speaking about change also, like, you know, this Wonder Women is a film which is completely headlined by women. It's an ensemble cast, first of all, completely women oriented. So you think that OTT is really changing the game when it comes to roles being written for women? Of course, of course, the, massively. I, I'm just thinking a, a decade ago, uh, for an actress, for example, there were so many boxes, like you hit a certain age and it was already decided that what you were going to do and what you were not going to do or something like that. I, sometimes I think about it, imagine if I was an actor like 20 years ago, what would it, I would have like been so unhappy and so it would have been so terrible, you have nothing to do, you know, you only play a heroine. And then after that, you hit a certain age and you're done. Anjali Menon, she is like speaking about female friendships in this film. And the other one of the other breakthrough movies this year was Darlings, uh, directed by Jasmeet Reen and which tackled the issue of domestic abuse. So some time back, Alankrita Srivastava had also spoken about how uh, when women are telling women's stories, they are bringing something very different to the table. I mean, as actors, what do you feel about that? I'm not <coughs> sure about the term better, but definitely the gaze and perspective and the lived experience as a woman informs a certain way the character is defined or the arc is led or what the takeaway of the film is but definitely feel at the end of the day whoever the maker is no matter what gender they come from uh, I believe that the sensitization that they ought to do on their own they need to unlearn and sort of examine their own patriarchal conditioning and you got to do your due diligence your due processes like um, that is the sort of prep and awareness one would expect from 
a creator. I'm a little tired of this male female conversation because as long as we can move into the basic business of storytelling, which is what cinema is about, it would be great. Unfortunately, we haven't had fair representation of female stories on screen in India, at least. I mean, if you just like look at India per se, whether across all geographies. Uh, and so as long as we do that, whoever does it, uh, it does not matter. Speaking about representation, what do you have to say about the representation off camera, like, you know, uh, this report which had uh, like recently come over Womania, it's not a very like, you know, rosy picture when it comes to the male to female ratio off camera. Clearly always we would want equal representation, there isn't, I'm hoping there isn't anyone who would say that, nah, we're fine with this, we're hoping. But I would say, again, in the context of Wonder Women, the, the, there have been quite a lot of questions where like, what was the was the word that was used women heavy uh set like for the men and how was it like and so the thing is that when the energies of certain gender being heavy on set is not what matters when it has to be the output and the intention with which they come to work and how good they are at their job for example with the choice what anjali may have taken to why praveen prabhakar is the editor for almost all her films, if I'm not mistaken, where Manish is the one who did the camera for this. It be did not matter to me that it was Manish behind the camera. What mattered to me is that he allowed us to be. Statistics are there. They are the realities. There is no denying it. But the only way we can bring about a change is by acting upon it in our present and the future projects. Yes, it's important to have those conversations, especially in spaces where it never is even a conversation, right? Conversational point, we got to introduce it. But amongst ourselves, we're finally like, we're not even reacting to it, we are acting upon it. So at the same time, I want to underscore the fact that uh, it's important, it's greatly important that we have stats like over when you come up, coming up. Uh, and we always, when we're talking about representation uh, today and diversity, somehow we are stuck, stuck in the male-female divide. We're not even talking about ageism, racism, racism, casteism. The Ovomania report does not even, for instance, I mean, of course, finding statistics in India is very difficult. But it is true that the diversity reports, which constantly came in the US, has brought in about a radical change in the number of blacks being represented on screen uh, as characters, both at you know both on screen and off screen. Matter of fact, if we are talking today about you know OTT giving that space, it was always there with television. It's the kind of stories that were being set that is seen as swing and change because the audiences of OTT have are very different from your television audience. So I think it's extremely important uh, to have this because when these statistics are thrown on your face, it's a constant unbiased way, in a way unbiased way of looking at our truth and then seeing how we can change it. Time and again, you have spoken about, you know, pay parity, like uh, construction of women's toilets on sets, like which was like a matter of concern, which has been spoken about. Most of the time when it comes to the discrimination and the ones who are discriminated against having to constantly speak about the discrimination, whereas all the questions again and again come to us only to comment on it, that's when like it becomes like, okay, where is the other side of it? And to be very honest, even in interviews, right? Like where are the ones who are getting away with the privileges who are ever weighing in on this? That is also a certain kind of support that one would expect, if not anything, be an ally. Again, like I said earlier, one, one does run out of patience to sit and give schooling every now and then. I, I also sometimes feel like got to get to work as an actor. I get to also take the time out to focus entirely on my craft than having to school people out of their conditioning while I have to examine my own self. You know, it's a lot, tall order. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for speaking so much. to thank us. You. Thank, thank you. you.